Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. What is my cat looking at? <laughs> she must have seen a reflection or something here. Okay, yeah. Thank you for joining me in my shop and risking some time with me here. Um, what I hope to do today uh, is complete the alignment on the radio, and for the first time, we'll know how well this radio is really capable of performing in its, uh, in its condition. So, uh, with Shadow's help, I'm going to get on with that. Let me just change the screen a little bit. We'll get some information on the screen here we can follow as we go through the procedure. Is that right, Shadow? Okay, right where Shadow's looking, up here. <clears throat> yeah, up there is the instructions. So on the far left, right at the bottom, it says broadcast, band, calibration, and alignment. That's where we are with this. So what does it say? With the gain condenser in full mesh, the dial pointer should be on the white horizontal line below 530 kilocycles on the dial scale. Okay, that's pretty clear. Let's take a look at this. So that's the very first step is to get the pointer, <coughs> excuse me, on the capacitor shaft in the right place. Now, what are the chances that it's wrong? It's really, really low. It's really low. Let's see what we can see here. Fully meshed. Okay. That's fully meshed. The dial pointer should be on the white horizontal line below the 530 kilocycle on the dial scale. So this white line here, just behind the pointer, it should line right up with it. It's dead on. It's absolutely dead on. Of course, that was done at the factory, and chances of it changing are so low. That's step one. That's great. Now, what about step two here? Turn the range switch to the extreme clockwise position. That's a broadcast band. And connect the test oscillator output to the A and G terminals of the receiver with a 400 ohm carbon resistor in series with the A terminal and the oscillator output the A and G terminals. So if the link is in, um, the G terminal is still a G, it's still a ground to the chassis. If the link is out, it would still be a G terminal. They're not saying whether the link should be in or out. Uh, the operation of the radio is only affected by the link on the highest band, and we're on the lowest band, the broadcast band. So I, I guess they're not commenting, it doesn't really matter. In my case, the link is in place and uh, so the G terminal is the same as the chassis. Right? The wire goes straight to the chassis. So that's what that is. We'll get all that set up. Okay, I think we're ready to go. And the radio's been on for a little while, and so it's warmed up. It's making some popping sounds there earlier, but seems to have stopped now. So. The instructions say, turn the range switch to extreme clockwise, that's done. Connect test oscillator to A and G terminals. So, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize where the camera was, it's over here. So we have the os test oscillator connected to the G and the A terminal through a 400 ohm, or 390 ohm resistor in series with the A terminal. Yeah, that's how it's done. So the purpose of this resistor is to make it look to the radio that it's attached to an antenna. Antennas are going to be 300, 400 ohm, a long wire antenna is going to look like that. So that's why you're putting that in here because beyond this wire it's just 50 ohms back to my signal generator and that's just too little on the antenna. It's going to, it may end up aligning the radio for a 50 ohm antenna but hook it up to a piece of wire it's going to be 400 ohms. And that would make a difference. Set the test oscillator to exactly 1500. Turn the receiver dial to 1500. Let's do the receiver dial first. That's why I have the camera over here. 1500. And now I'm going to do myself a favor. Why was that so crunchy? Put this big knob on here. 
What's with that? Oh, this is a, this is something new. Well, I can't have this. This is probably the popping I heard. Okay, uh, alignment is put on hold for a minute. <laughs> sort this out. Now that kind of sound can be caused by the plates rubbing in the capacitor. It can also be caused by the shaft the capacitor is rotating on, not making good ground contact. The rotating part is grounded to the chassis, or at least to the frame of the capacitor. Different radios do different things at that point with the frame. The frame may be grounded on the chassis or may not. The insulated uh, plates are the stator. The stator plates are the ones that are insulated. And that's, so you have this problem now of how do you ground a rotating piece. Better than that, that's for sure. Now the way it's done in most radios is a couple of things being done to enable the, uh, the rotating shaft to be grounded. Let's see what they've done here. So I see some springs. Let me just get a stick here and point to them. Hey. Okay, I'll use my very highly special pointer stick. So if you look, you see these pieces here and here. There's one here. This piece, look, it goes down through a, uh, uh, oops, sorry, down through a copper braid right to the chassis there. So it's this. This one here. There's probably one on the back side here too. Yep, same thing on the back side. The actual contact point is right here. That's that's where the slip joint or what slip contact, whatever you want to call it is. That's probably where the noise is. Let's see if we can get this uh I'll try and stop stop in it spot. This is really kind of crazy. Just see if any of these click. None of them click. Oh, that one. That one does. You think with this much grounding in here, uh, you know, one of them's going to do the trick. But there's a reason why they put so many of those in. They really want this to be firmly grounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little cleaner on there. Now I've got some ridiculously strong cleaner just handy here. So I'm going to use this. But we'll see if I got it right. certain spots along the dial. You might expect, you know, in a radio that is seldom tuned to its limits, this is true of volume controls too and things like that, are seldom moved into certain areas, those areas become dirty. So maybe you're going through them for the first time and just working the thing like this can clean itself, sort of. If I start laughing uh, crazily, it's because of the fumes in here. Occasionally, when you pick up signals and spin through them quickly, it might sound like dirt when they're not.
maybe the radio's seldom been tuned into this area here. I think it's seldom been tuned anywhere for the last <laughs> 40, 50 years. Getting quieter. Well, I think that's done it. Now, it could be those things I sprayed. Uh, it could be some other contact that I didn't spray that that has cleaned itself just from me working it, but I'll bet you it's those spring-loaded grounding grounding guys. Very good. I guess the radio is a little like us, isn't it? Use it or lose it. Certainly, in, in terms of being a problem, we're done. 1500. Where we're going. Signal generators right up here. Low output. No, I didn't hear it. It's very low output, though. Let's put this on 1500. Right on the 1500 mark. Quite a ways off here. Yeah, so at 1500 is 1543. Our first adjustment will be adjusting the local oscillator uh, for this band. I think they said number five. 1500 kilocycles. Number five is right in this. Right where? 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 Right in this hole here. Okay. Do it with this guy. Okay, we're in. Now the objective is to get the radio to receive 1500 here, not 15, 1540. So we'll turn this towards 1500. So I can still hear it. And I'll figure out which way to turn the screw here. It cammed out. Great big screwdriver. It's definitely affecting the radio. Let's at least get the screw loose here. Pretty, pretty stiff. Oh, I almost got it. stuff. Oh, is that it? That can't be it. Yeah, 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 I'm on my way. Jim, Jim, got a lot more to go here. Come on. No problem. I only 
only got two hands. Still not sure which way I'm turning it. Let's go a little more juice here. Okay. Can't do it with that. I'll have to put up with the uh, with the uh, screwdriver effect here. Not much effect from this little screwdriver. Radar right on 1500 here, or the signal generator, and we'll bring this right up. Try to ignore the interference. Just trimmer five, which I did. Carefully tune the receiver to the signal and adjust trimmers six and seven for maximum output. Now that's a strange statement, isn't it? Didn't I just finish making sure the receiver was carefully tuned? Carefully tune the receiver to the signal and adjust trimmers six and seven. Six and seven. So six is the one right up on top here. This is uh, this section of the capacitor is only effective in the broadcast band anyway, and seven is right here. Hmm. Just getting your hand near it is enough. Carefully tune the radio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the radio a little bit off this frequency. You know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm trying to get away from the little bit of interference that's here. We'll tune the signal generator. Watch for a max on the meter here. Hmm. That's strange. That meter does not seem to follow what, what it sounds like, does it? Seems to be reacting. Uh, it should only go up and down once. It's just a little odd. Okay, let me try moving this off here. Because maybe 1500. Now, now we'll tune in the radio. It's a little better here. to use a high volume, low input. That's about as best we can do there. Six and seven. Six first. No effect from the screwdriver. way out. Passed. Pretty good there. And number seven. A little bit of an effect. I don't hear it, but I see it in the meter. Down, down. This was this one was good. OK, 
Okay, and the next step on here now is uh, adjust the test oscillator 600 to the receiver to that signal. Notice it says doesn't, doesn't say dial in 600. It says tune the receiver to the 600 that comes out of your generator. Let's do that. 600. Okay, there's no, that. Says 599, but it's really 600. And we'll go down and find it. Which, of course, is going to be down at 600. Watching the meter there, the peak occurs right there. When I check, it is just a hair off 600. That's great. That's really pretty good. Now, what do we do that we're here now? 600, adjust trimmer number eight for maximum. And then there's an interesting thing that comes after that. Eight, so eight is this one. This is a, uh, well, looks like a capacitor. Maybe it's in series or something. There we go. Watch the meter. Down. All the other way. Ever so slightly off. Not much at all. There we go. Okay, let me just turn this down a bit. So I got Sound like a dirty volume control that's going partly open there. Something's happening. I don't know. Interesting stuff. We'll ignore it. Uh, adjust from our eight. Here we are. Then, then here we go. Then try to increase the output meter reading by detuning number eight slightly and retuning the receiver dial. If the output goes down, detune the trimmer in the opposite direction. Continue detuning the trimmer and retuning the receiver dial until the maximum output meter deflection is secured. This operation is commonly known as rocking and when performed as described will give maximum selectivity and sensitivity even though the dial may be slightly off calibration the 600 so this is a lesson that I've spent years learning and I only learned it maybe six months ago I used to focus on trying to get the pointer to be accurate on the dial which is really quite a challenge in fact with a lot of these radios it's almost impossible to do that was my focus what I was trading off was peak performance by doing that and I didn't realize this so so now and, it, and this is a well-written instruction for this particular radio. The engineer really, really knows what's going on with repair guys. That's why he's written it the way he's written it. So fantastic. Let's let's do what he says. We'll do the rocking thing, but he's described it in great detail how to do it. Uh, and what exactly am I rocking? It's number eight still. We're still going to fill with number eight. What I've, what I've done is, in my excitement, I put down my screwdriver. I lost it. Okay, I got another one. I got another one. Okay, so let's see, read this, read this again. Then try to increase the output meter reading by detuning 8 slightly and retuning the receiver dial. So the, the key thing is, the pointer is going to go up and down. We have to look at it where it is now and try to get it to land somewhere higher than this. Now, it's just right down at the bottom of the scale here. I can, of course, bring it up a bit here. So make a note as to where this is. In fact, I'm going to set it. It's set on minus 6 dB. Detune. Ah, it doesn't mount. Yeah, it's the same thing, Jim. <laughs> same thing. Detune a little bit. I'm going to go counterclockwise. Well, now I've uncalibrated my meter there. Let's put it back. 
six. Okay, I'm going a little bit counterclockwise. Okay, down just a wee bit. Now, can we bring it back up and higher? No, I don't think we can. Wow, this is this is crazy stuff here. So we'll go the other way. A little bit. And then move this. Oh, we're up. We got up. We got up. Let's go a little further. Okay, we're, we're not going up now. We're going back down. So go back just a wee bit. This is, we're talking a degree and turning the... Uh, just under seven. Actually, that's over seven is what that is. Over set five, 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 five. Get your numbers right, man. Okay, calm down. But basically, you're trying different positions of one trimmer and then rocking the other control through it and then reading to see which combination gives you the ultimate highest response. So I think I'm, I'm almost at now. If you just start turning both of them, it all becomes kind of a random thing. I mean, you can still get there, but it becomes random at that point. You're kind of a lucky hit. No, back. How precise do you need to get this? I think that's the best I can do right there. I don't think I can get it any better. Oh, my ears. Okay, so uh, now, what does it say? Right at the end, this operation commonly known as rocking and when performed as described will give maximum selectivity and sensitivity even though the dial may be slightly off calibration at 600. Thank you, Mr. Engineer, whoever wrote that. What he wrote there is what's taken me so long to figure out. Because in most cases, they just say rock the dial. They don't give any explanation for what it is you're really trying to do. And rocking the dial is not descriptive enough. Wave trap adjustment. There isn't one in this radio. Band number two. So we're on to band number two. I think we should listen. Listen to this and see what we got out of it now. So I'm going to take off the signal generator here. Take my antenna. And I think it's switched on down here. Stick it on. Let's see what we get. That's 590. 610 St. Catherine's not coming in. No 640. Dirt there. No 680. Yeah, this is not this is not good, is it? Maybe the rate, maybe the antenna is not switched on. I have to go check it because it's a little bit of a surprisingly drab result there. Give this a try. The switch was off. We'll just go back this way. Little thundering bass coming out of that speaker, shaking my bench here. Hear it? Yeah. 
barely. It's 8.40 was there, but barely. No 7.40. Wow, that's the worst result I've ever seen from aligning a radio. Uh, that's really sad. <laughs> uh, how come? Look, it sounds like it's trying hard, but... Admittedly, my outdoor antenna is really lousy. Um, so how have we got? Um, so I have a loop antenna designed for use with a radio like this. The radio is designed for a loop antenna, or a, not a loop antenna, but a dipole antenna to be installed, especially for the high shortwave band. It doesn't say anything about a loop antenna, but I think if I hook the loop up between the regular antenna input I'm using now and the chassis, we'll have a loop working for us. With a snap of his fingers. He sounds optimistic. Yeah, let's, let's try the loop antenna on here. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I have the loop antenna cable here, and I got some clip leads to hook up to the antenna. Not hooked up just yet. And the loop antenna looks like this. It's a big, it's a big one. And uh, in all honesty, it's a random built antenna. This is a random, <laughs> just whatever I had when I built this. Oh my gosh, I built this 40 years ago, and here it is. Here we go. So, my latest addition is I put a nice stable tripod on the bottom of it now. So it's not so flimsy. But frankly, it hasn't been performing. The last radio I put it on, I was really quite disappointed. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Okay, back to the radio. Now the, the antenna, the big antenna I just put on there is tuned. So I have to tune the antenna. I have to tune the radio and then tune the antenna too. Okay, so we're going to hook up the antenna now. A little volume on the radio. What do we get? The signal level coming out of a loop antenna can, can be low. Not necessarily, but it can be a little low. The main thing is, even if the signal is low, the noise is even lower. That's the whole objective. So, so we're picking up something right away. That's a good sign. That's 590. That's one of the strongest stations here. Let me see if I can pick it up even higher on the antenna. Well, Once again, it's not performing properly. Hmm. Very odd. How about directionality? Nothing. I don't know what to say about that. I'm going to have to do some separate work on that antenna and figure out what has happened to it. So, but in any case, it's better than the wire I was using. So I, I think what it really amounts to now is that that's a fancy long wire antenna out there. I don't think it's really a loop. Yeah, it de-looped it. So that's just a chunk of wire, funny shaped chunk of wire behind me now. Better than the antenna coming in though. Okay, let's, let's go through it again. Five ninety. Six forty. Come on, man. So six forty is being wiped out by this very heavy interference. Yeah, it's not working well at all.
Let's just see if that antenna will tune on this. Tuning, by the way, is a capacitor. I didn't have the ground on. I need the ground on for this to be resonant. stop and fix my antenna. Something is wrong with it. I looked at it briefly before. Couldn't see a thing. Something has gone wrong with it. And I like that antenna, so I'm going to stop and sort that out. Well, like, like lots of things, I fiddle around with that antenna and then uh, suddenly it started working. So I don't know exactly what's up. Let's see. What's going on? So I'm on the French station. Why am I not hearing it? Miss Tune, let me tune the antenna touch. Okay, so I have a look now. So what changed between the last moment and now? I don't know. That's how sharp the tuning is on this antenna. Unfortunately, the uh, interfering signal that's causing the heterodyne pitch that we're hearing can't can't be knocked out by using the directionality of the antenna. So, but that's that's not a problem with the radio, I don't think. That's a problem just with what's here in the shop. That's great. That's good. Let's go check those other stations now. It's 7:40 right in here. Tune the antenna attached. Well, well, that made a big difference. Hear it? Tune the antenna again. most uh, AM stations that I can hear I yeah, picked up with the antenna this way. They're all kind of the same. They're all coming from the same basic area. Okay, oh, nope, nope, let's go over here. That's 740. That's not easy to pick up. 680. See how weak the, like, the antenna has to be tuned every 20 kilohertz or so. 680 should be right around here. Wow, okay. Yeah, bad weather coming. Uh, yesterday it was raining here a little bit. Temperature got up to like 5 degrees. Today we could get 15 to 20 centimeters of snow from uh, what's called lake effect snow coming off of uh, Lake Huron. So that, that, that's a pretty good reception there because there is a noise signal right near it. Somewhere. Can't even hear it. Wow. Okay, we'll try 640. Okay, I'll tune the antenna again. Hmm. Where? 
We're at the limit of the tuning capacitor on the antenna. But there we are. I mean, this is enough. This is enough to let me know that radio is actually working. Why don't you give it a decent antenna? Okay, onward. It gets simpler and simpler, I think, as we go. Now, the next band uh, there's an instruction here at the end of the wave trap adjustment. Check the adjustment of trimmers 5, 6, and 7 at 1500. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to move on. Band number two, calibration and alignment. Turn range switch to center position. Oops. Center position. I lost my lost where I was here. Adjust test oscillator to five megacycles. <coughs> oh, just gotta blow the virus out there. Five megacycles. Five. It's way up here. Now, this band is pretty useless uh, these days for listening to. It's loaded with noise, especially the lower you get, the noisier it gets. Five here, up in this area, you might get some shortwave reception, but nothing below here. So, you know, maybe from here to here, maybe with a long antenna and a bit of luck, you might get something. Uh, so let me make sure it's right on five. So I'm looking at it to eliminate the parallax error there. It's on five. Let's give it five. Five to the antenna. So I gotta take it off the loop. That loop antenna is only good for the broadcast band. Uh, my loop antenna. Can't use it on any other band. It won't tune. So we want to reconnect this guy through his resistor. And I can't remember if we connected the ground or not. I'll leave it off for now. Not much heard yet. Okay, let's see. The moderate signal, 6-5 coming. Right past 5. Uh-oh. Hmm. Yeah, let's get a little more. Seems like something's burning in here. There it is. That's a weak, sad signal there. What do we do now? Calibrate and dial adjust trimmer number 9. If two peaks are found, the proper one is the one with the trimmer screw farthest out. Number 9. Number nine, it's down here. Check it for metal sensitivity here. Not much of anything. Okay. What happens when you turn this one? Stiff again. Well, sounds like, what do I expect it to do? This is the oscillator, isn't it? Because it's on 5.1, that's the problem. The problem is we want to, let's do more power here. Let's chase that. Let's chase it down to 5. here. Let's get in the right screw. I wonder if they call these things screws. Okay, here we go. Woo, 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 woo. It broke into oscillation there. So I tuned it right past because I got a long ways to go here. 
Holy smokes, what is happening there? Whew. Wow, wow. <laughs> I said there was nothing to pick up on this band. What, what did I do? I threw the, uh, we're at five. This thing is, is so sensitive. Oh, I got it on. Way up, way up, way up. Jim, 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 Jim. Probably what's happening here is I'm tuning it closer and closer to the sweet spot. It's getting stronger and stronger. I started out with a pretty weak signal, everything off. Now it's just become better, and I'm just hitting it with a stupidly strong signal. Nothing too strong there. I have the volume right down? No. Okay, try to turn the right screw now. Okay, past it. And then. Okay, now we're going to go for the five. Why is it now? I have a strong signal again, but it's become very weak. What happened there? Nothing exciting about that. What happened to that crazy wild? What happened to the crazy wild? It wasn't from this, was it? It's all kind of unnerving here. I mean, this thing was screaming like a banshee there for a while. That's all it's got now? It's gone from banshee to... Ooh, what happened there? What happened? Okay, son of a gun. <laughs> Thought I had this all sorted out. Why, 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 why? Why are you a hassle? Okay, powering this guy off. That's probably why, right? <laughs> uh, okay, I know what I gotta work on next. Okay, let's take a look at it under the microscope here and just get a good close look. We're looking right down into the cup part of it. The out of focus parts are sticking up towards the lens there. Okay, and we'll look down here at the business end. So those are the wires I tried to solder to. You know, it doesn't look impossible. I think I just did a lousy job of it. Let me turn this over now. Look at the back side of it. I said something about soldering. This looks soldered. This definitely looks soldered up here. So that looks like the lead wire tips coming through the solder. Right? Uh, let's see if my guy can help out with this. Right there. Right there. And this all looks like solder for sure. So what am I saying about you can't solder to these things? Sure, looks heavily soldered to me. And then we have the uh, this is the squeeze down part. My understanding is that this this part is the actual connection, and there is no solder, but we certainly see solder on this one. You could potentially pry those back open because um, there's they're not soldered in any way. That. You know, that looks like it's clamped down on the insulation. This doesn't, this isn't done the way I've seen others. They've clamped the whole wire insulation and all here, and then they brought the conductor up and soldered it in. Why can't I do that? 
Why can't I do that? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to try to pick this thing apart, stick a new wire right in it, solder it up properly. All that. Who told me these things were never soldered? Who told me that? I don't know who told me that. Where did I get that idea from? Okay, I'm now going to make loud whacking sounds here. I spared you. Sure enough, that's how they did it. The wire insulation's all in here. You know, if I could just like there's some definitely some wire through here now, steel or not, the wire's not steel. Um, I can clamp a wire in here and just throw a lot of solder on it. Not not try to take it up to the top here. Leave all this as it is. Just Pack one in there, solder up, clamp down. Get the insulation out, but leave the wires behind. Stop. I gotta find wire. I gotta. I gotta do a couple things here. Good. A little long? Yeah, made it a little long. Duh. Made it a little long. Yeah, it should be shorter, but don't think it's gonna make much difference, I think. There we are. That's not going to not work. Now, how much of the alignment was bogus because of that problem? Probably very little of it was actually bogus. Well, let's see how we do this time. Power on.
It's using the signal generator as an antenna right now. Signal generator still at five. is the radio is breaking into oscillation here. And the first thing that comes to mind is that devilish little capacitor that I put in back here. That's what that craziness is. Uh, what else could it be due to? The way I have the antenna connected? Let's see if we can make that happen again. It's gone silent, more silent up here, but I think there still is an oscillation. It's an oscillation on a band that's seldom used. Okay, so we'll do the alignment at 4 megahertz instead. We'll even do it at 4 noise there. Let's do it in the middle. What's that sound? <laughs> what the heck is that sound? I don't know. That might be my soldering iron, believe it or not. Yes, it is. Okay, no soldering iron sound. 900, no, 3 megahertz. 3 megahertz. 3. Not bad. I mean, it's there. Okay. Usually the first, and I gotta read the instructions, which I did not pop up on the screen this time. Let me just look at them on my own. What does it say? Adjust to five. Okay, so I've done it to three instead. It's not the best thing to do. Calibrate the dial, adjust trimmer number nine for maximum output. Trimmer number nine. Where will I find you? Nine. Oh yeah, it's this one. Oh, that's right. I made a Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot I made a mistake. I forgot everything. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting to lose my, my head here. Now I'm pretty sure this is just an oscillator, so we were just and it's right on. I'm sure it's just, I'm just adjusting an oscillator. So, I mean, how far out are we here? We're nowhere. So, a band no one's going to, they're going to listen to. On a radio that might get played once a year. I don't know. Okay, so, all that's happening there is I'm tuning in noise. It sounds like I'm peaking a radio. Mm -mm. Where's the tone? Where'd the tone go? It's right on, right on with some noise. That's it. What else is left here? Ooh, if two peaks are found, the proper one is that with the trimmer screw farthest out. Should I go fishing for that? No, we'll assume it was aligned properly and it's close. So what I've done is just corrected a small error. I'm sure we got the right peak. Carefully tune the receiver to the signal and adjust the trimmer number 10 for maximum output. Try increasing the output by Detuning 10 and retuning the dial. Where's 10? Oh, don't. There's 10. There's 10. Do it in a corner. 
quieter spot. Let's try it right in here. Okay, number 10. Tighten and watch the meter. Down, I can hear it. Up. Okay, so there's where the peak is. How about 400 hertz? It's a little easier on the ear. Okay, now we do the detuning, de rocking thing. So we try, we detune this uh, tightening, tightening direction slightly. I'm on the minus six on the meter. There we go. And we gotta go a fair ways. Okay, so that's down a bit. No, it's not coming back here. We'll go the other way. That's the peak. Where is it? Where is it going? It doesn't go down until way up here. I can't seem to get it much better than it was. There it is. barely made any difference but there we are okay that's done but this band won't be listened to it's really the next one the next one that's going to be a big deal now does that have special stuff turn the range switch to the extreme counterclockwise position be sure d and g terminals on the antenna strip are connected together bah. and they are connected together feeding into the antenna still on here to another section just looking at my document set the test oscillator to 16 megahertz tune the receiver dial to exactly 16 16 don't be fooled here I've done this before where I've started looking at the AM band instead of the short wave band many many ways to make mistakes here as usual so that's on 16 okay 16 Calibrate my machine here for a second. Okay, that's better. Where am I going? 16, 16, 16. That's up full now. This is a, a strong signal. Hello, hello. Wow, that's bad. That's there. That's on 16. That's on 16. Ten is connected. Look full power here. Oh my gosh, it's way up at 18. That's what's going on. Power down. Way up at 18. 
power down. Down. So lots of good reset. Why is it shaky? It says 16, it's trying to receive 18. Now this band is going to be fun for the owner because you can pick up short wave around the 6 late in the evening, right? And then you can pick up uh, a little above the 7, you can make, pick up some short wave. Above the 9, you pick up short wave during the day, sometimes strong in the uh, later afternoon. Uh, a little higher than 11, you can pick stuff up. 13, a little higher than that, you can pick up a European band. 15 megahertz and above, you pick up more short wave. So all across here is interesting short wave to pick up if I can make the radio work well. But it seems to be working well right now, actually. Let's see if we can get 16 instead of 18. Okay, to calibrate the dial, adjust trimmer number 11. Check to see it has been adjusted to the proper peak. Ah, by tune, oh, 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 tuning the receiver to approximately 15.1. A repeat signal should be heard at this point. If none is present, even with greatly increased oscillator output, retune the receiver to 16 and adjust trimmer 11 to the proper peak with the trimmer screw further out. Oh, we worded that a little difficult. Difficultly. Okay, over again. Calibrate the dial, adjust trimmer number 11. Whoa! Uh, 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 trimmer number 11 is uh, underneath the chassis. Are you supposed to be able to get to it this way? Uh. I don't see how. Trimmer number 11. Under chassis. Well, I remember there's one under there. I have to flip the radio up. I'm going to leave it operating when I do it in case something happens and we'll know about it. Just don't get a shock and don't drop it. What's that all about? pushing down on the chassis. Well, I don't know what that's all about. Clearly this is the proper angle to operate the radio on. Don't know what all that was about. There is a bottom plate. The bottom plate's not on while I'm doing this. The capacitor to adjust is right here. Is there a hole in the plate? Voila! A hole in the plate. Is it in the right spot? Where's the adjustment again? It's right here. Oh yeah. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't leave a big piece of metal around the radio. So, okay, we can only call this all a preliminary alignment because I'm going to have to redo much of it after I put the bottom plate on. But that's okay because I made a mistake up here. i got to redo the whole thing anyway. I will do that all on my own time. But at least we can find out at this point um, what we're finding out. The radio is working quite well. So, 18. That's a long ways for a trimmer to go. So I'm going to Turn this towards where we want to go. Funny, funny sound there, right? Eh? Ooh, that's like an AVC uh, uh, motorboating. Okay, we'll go like this. Now we'll turn the trimmer to find out which way to go. Tighter or looser? Looser? No. Tighter? Tighter. So I want to go a lot tighter. A lot tighter. Let's see where we are now. I didn't go very far. Hmm. We didn't get very far. A long ways to go to get to uh, 
16. <laughs> oh, this is way really loose. Wow, that was really loose. Way out. Okay, let's see where we are now. Oop, wrong way. Okay, we're at 17.3. I'll put this at 16, 16.7. See when we go by it. Because the capacitor is tightening up. There went past it. Where are we now? Okay, let's see if we can tighten her up further. Yep, past it. Almost 16 exactly now. Notice the radio got quieter and quieter. Like that. Did, did the signal get quieter and quieter? Could be well, al well aligned at the wrong spot. And now I'm moving it to the right spot. Is there another adjustment? There is, isn't there? Carefully tune adjust the trimmer in number 12 to a peak. Now we do that. Uh, we, we, we do that. Um, oh, wait a minute. I must have made a mistake there. We just adjusted 11. Robert trim. So we've adjusted the local oscillator. Carefully tune the receiver to the signal. Adjust the trimmer number 12. Oh, 12 is up on top. 12 is the one where my capacitor is connected. 16. To carefully tune the receiver to the signal, then try increasing the output by D to O. Oh, adjust trimmer 12 to a peak. It's the same procedure. Tune the radio very carefully. I'm going to tune the signal generator. Can't see the meter from there, can you? Tune. Or try tuning. First, first we peak it. Is that what we do? Seems way out also. The capacitor is way, way open. Okay, we pass the peak. That's the peak. Now. Even 400 hertz is annoying at a high volume. Now we detune this guy and do the rocking thing. So we're going to loosen it a bit and watch that meter. Hold still meter. So this time I'm trying to get above what would be minus 6.5.
that went really well. Okay, that's the last, just have the last thing. Check, check the adjustment by tuning the receiver to the image at about 15.1. The image should be much weaker than the 16 megahertz signal. Hopefully you wouldn't even hear it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna tune to the image. Double the IF down. So 455 twice. That's 900. So we're going down to 15.1. See what we hear. Well, I don't hear anything. So I'm going to boost the antenna signal, which was a, a low signal. See how far we can go here before we hear it. 15.1, nothing. Okay, and I'm putting a strongest signal you might encounter on an antenna. Fifteen point ones in this area. I don't hear a thing. We're now going to get hit with a blast. We don't hear anything. That's fantastic. I don't hear a thing. Or here up there, too much for the radio almost. That's an unrealistically strong signal. There we go. I think that proves the image is weak, and we've tuned on the correct, the correct thing. That's it. That's the end of the road. We've hit the end of the road. So we'll listen to the short wave band. And what I have to do is I have to put the back, I put, put put the base plate on, and go through the whole process again of aligning the radio properly. What I'm going to do with this radio, I'm going to start doing with these radios when I fix them up. Something that's been missing in my entire YouTube channel all this time is the final listening session, where I take the radio, I take it in my other room, where I have a much much better arrangement. Uh, so, but arrangement not quite good enough to make videos until now. So I've been working on that. So I'm going to start producing videos uh, out of my listening area. When I finish a radio, the radio will go there. There's other radios that are in top shape. You can compare them and find out for sure just how well a radio like this is working. So that, that aspect has been missing from my videos. I've been doing it, but only occasionally have I tried to video it. But that's going to change, I hope. So uh, yeah, we want to listen to this radio now. Listen to it here and see what we can pick up. It should be should be good. Should be very good. Volume down, antenna on, volume up. That's a good start. So it's uh, it's 10:30 in the morning. Hard to say what we're going to get here. If we're going to get anything. We'll go right to the top because I have been picking up stations at 17 megahertz lately. Oh, signal generator still going. Get it right up. Now she's really hot right where I tuned it up. <laughs> really hot right there. <laughs> Getting quieter and quieter. I made the radio really hot here, but not so good down here. Is that what's really happened? I turn up the compensator. Well, seems to be coming back now. Seven and eight. And they were all amazed and they 
were all amazed that the radio worked. Kind of the best I can do here is just prove that it's receiving. Can't make any judgments here. Yeah, that, that, that's a real signal. That uh, funny thing. That's a real radio signal. Okay, uh, I think I'm done with the radio, uh, except for what I have to do still. <laughs> uh, seems pretty good. I think when I do the final alignment with the base plate on, uh, then from there it's going to be down in my uh, listening post for another listen to it. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks a lot for watching uh, all the way to here. And uh, I'm going to think of what radio is going to come in here next. Hmm.